surviving, you try to sneak away in, but you want every opportunity to do. Oh! Good fighters, great fights. That's the mantra over at Box TV. Tonight, our Wednesday night fights here on your boxing channel once again come to you live from our world headquarters in Tampa, Florida. This is Pro Box TV. We don't promote boxers, we promote boxing. We get things started this evening with an eight round matchup in the super welterweight division. Ismael Villarreal, 12 and one, fighting out of the Bronx, will have his father and his grandfather in his corner. His opponent, J.D. Pretty Boy, John David Martinez, 19 and two, with 16 knockouts. Next up, it is a 10 round co-main event for the vacant WBA Intercontinental Light Heavyweight title. And it's a battle of unbeatens. 11 and 0 Australian, Clay the Weapon Waterman against 11 and 0 Canadian, Kareem the Supreme Hackett. And then our main event, also scheduled for 10 rounds for the vacant WBA Continental North America Super Lightweight Champion, 777 Powerhouse, Batazan Chukimbaev, 20 and one, 16 wins by knockout. His opponent is the Argentine, 22 and one, Hugo Alberto Roldan. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Goldberg, of course, joined by my powerful partners, the former two-time world champion, the magic man, Paulie Molinaji, former world champion, Chris Algieri. Paulie, we missed you last show. I'm back. He's what back. Vengeance. He's back, so we get a little break once in a while. Yeah, right. Yeah. Paulie's back. <laughs> Paulie, let's talk about the man who has only lost one time, and that is to a man who is now a world champion, and it is Jukin Baev. Yeah, you know, both guys tonight uh, in the main event have only have one loss. And the good thing, interesting thing about both of these guys is very good fighters. They've managed even to step up a little bit, but their biggest step up has been a defeat. And that's why tonight they are stepping up against one another. Don't get me wrong. They're st they've shown quality in the wins that they've gotten, and they've gotten some quality wins on their record. But... Jukumbaya been losing to Subriel Matias, Matias in, a, in a world title fight. That's his only loss. He knows the level he's at. Now he's got to try to get back to that level. And tonight he's got a good opponent in front of him. Yeah, Paulie, he has worked with Terrence Crawford, but all of that means absolutely nothing to the Argentine, right, Chris? Yeah, I know. I mean, listen, Jukumbaya is one of the top top prospects we've had on our air. He's, he's fought for, you know, he's fought a current world champion um, and did well even in the loss. But, man, don't tell Roll Dan that. We've had plenty of tough, scrappy Argentinians who've come up here to upset the apple cart. I think we've got another one here tonight in Roll Dan. We look forward to three great fights, two belts on the line this evening. Wednesday night fights on your boxing channel, Pro Box TV. And we get things started with that eight-round matchup in which I mentioned earlier, Ismael Villarreal against John David Martinez, our tale of the tape. You can see Martinez is eight years the elder of his opponent, three inches taller, but the reach is virtually identical. To officially get things underway here inside our Pro Box TV world headquarters, we get set for these two men to enter the ring to battle for a potential eight rounds in the super welterweight division. Both men determined to put on a show, and this is a fight in which I can share a storyline that was supposed to take place back in January, and John David Martinez has waited and waited, and the wait is finally over. He has waited because he has wanted to fight Ismael out of the Bronx via Real, and you'll get a chance very soon. Let's get it to our ring announcer. As always, it is Mark Lichtenfeld. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are scheduled for eight rounds in the super welterweight division. Esta pelea está patada a ocho saltos en el peso super welter. Your judges for this contest, Los Jueces, Joe Ware, Brian Gary and Shami Shipman. And your referee in charge, El Arbitro, Emil Lombardi. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the teal with orange, in La Esquina Azul con pantalones verde azulado y anaranjado. 
Pesando 155.8 libras. Weighing in at 155.8 pounds. His record, 19 wins, two losses with 16 wins by knockout. Con record, 19 victorias, dos derrotas. Con 16 por la vida del knockout. De Miami, Florida, John David. Pretty boy, Martinez. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white with black. In la esquina rojo, con pantalones blanco y negro. Pesando 155.2 libras, weighing it at 155.2 pounds. His record, 12 wins, one loss with eight wins by knockout. Con record, 12 victorias y una derrota, con ocho por la vida del knockout. From the boogie down Bronx, New York, he is Ismael Maelo. All right, guys, let's go. All right, guys, we know the rules in the locker room, all right? Take a good, clean fight out of both of you, okay? Close attention to my commands, protect yourself at all times, touch them up, and let's wait for the bell. 12 and 1, Ismael Villarreal fighting out of the Bronx against 19 and 2, John. David right. Martinez from right here in the Sunshine State. Fight scheduled for eight rounds. Time. Here we go. It's time to fight. White, black, and red trunks for Via Real. Teal, orange trunks for John David Martinez. Villarreal comes out in the southpaw stance. You see he's on that back foot. He's going to be looked to be uh, the one of those counter punching southpaws. Sometimes those guys are tricky to deal with. 67% finish rate for Villarreal. And an impressive finish rate of 84% for John David Martinez. Yeah, champ, you can see Villarreal is setting things up. He's throwing some throwaway jabs, keeping his eyes open, collecting some data, staying on the outside. Yeah, he's trying to give that looks halfway inside and then step out. He's trying to get Martinez to commit so he can counter him with that counter left hand. Joseph Rotonda, who promotes Villarreal, talked about the fact that this fight was to happen in January on the undercard of a Charlo fight, that the entire card ended up getting canceled. And he said of John David Martinez, his opponent's wild, he's ready, he is a nice kid, and he has waited for this fight tonight. That was, you mean the Charlo fight that he was gonna yep. fight uh, Tim Zhu, but he allegedly broke his hand, but then in reality, he was actually just not fighting him because he was gonna fight Canelo? Alleg that, that allegedly, fight. allegedly. Fight. Yeah. <laughs> I, believe that, I believe that was the one, yeah. <laughs> That's the one, all right. Allegedly. Villarreal's doing something, <laughs> doing something pretty classy. He's he's hiding his range. He, he's working his way closer and closer to Martinez without Martinez realizing it. He started on the outside, but he's been getting closer and closer. Threw a weird combination a few seconds ago. He stepped in on a pivot and threw a double left hook with the, uh, as on, the, on the switch of stance. To the body and head. Martinez has to start getting off, though. I mean, you know, you know from the looks of it, okay, it looks like uh, Villarreal is, is the one that is, uh, you know, being a little bit negative going back, but he's trying to actually set traps, and he's throwing yes. punches. Martinez is just tiptoeing forward, completely confuses as to how to close the range here. Yeah, Villarreal is definitely way more cerebral in there. He, he looks like he's setting things up, looking like he knows what he wants to do. Martinez, not so much. He came out strong, pumping behind that jab, but... There it is again, going back to that jab. 26-year-old against 34-year-old. Our first of three fights on a Wednesday night here on Pro Box TV. The area, I'll try that again. That step in, double in the left hand. Combination missed with the finish of the left hook. I 
I mentioned Villarreal has both his father and grandfather in his corner. His father, Otilio, a New York State lightweight champion back in 1993. His last professional fight was against Hector Camacho. On the other side, Eric Castanos and John David Martinez went together, have never lost a fight. Ismael's dad also fought Zab Judah during a career that spanned from 1992 to 2007. Set for round two. Which one in that corner were his relatives? The one in the... In uh, Villarreal, uh -huh. father and grandfather. Oh. So from Insensión, I know him from New York. But there you go. Is he the... Insensión is... He, he's the grandpa. Fermin is a grandpa? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Fermin as a trainer when I was in the amateurs. There you... <laughs> but you have an age, Paul. Oof. Oh, my nice shape right there. Set up Five. beautifully. Wait, wait, six, seven, eight. Walk to me. Walk to me. All right, you want to continue? You want to continue? Oh. I did not like the reaction of Martinez from that right hand. And Villarreal didn't even turn into the, into the shots. Or it was not. And Villarreal comes out in the natural orthodox stance here to start the second and delivered that big shot, guys. And that's what I was saying in the first round. He was sneakily closing on, the distance. Martinez didn't realize it. And that's why he was able to land that right hand that way. Break! 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 Step back. My break. Step back. Get it clean. Let's go. Oh. Here's that switch again, Paulie. Let go of the arm. Come on, work out with it. Let yeah. go of the arm. Yes, and it's on, an interesting, work. it's almost something like you see work. like an, an MMA fight. In this day and age, it's oh. catch and shoot, very nice. It's almost uncommon to see fighters that don't utilize the switch stance anymore. The game has certainly progressed. Some do it very well, some break, do it break, to a deficit. Break, 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 most break, break, don't break, do it very well. He <laughs> was not progressed as Martinez. He, the more you get to look at him, the more you realize he's probably got a bit of a blow on a record. Very, very nervous when punches are coming his way. Looks very, very out of, uh, not a depth, out of, out, of, out of his depth, should I say, in there in close quarters. Uncomfortable work. Very unsure. Very novice yeah. despite the fact that his pro record is 21 pro fights. And the last three fights for Villarreal have been against an opponent that was 12 and 0, 13 and 0, and 19 and 4. Yeah. So that illustrates your point, Magic Man. Back yeah. to Southpaw. But, but Martinez is one of those, one of those juicy ones where he's 19 and 2, but you could get, you could find a guy who's 4 and 15 to beat him. You know? Got Five. hurt by the Six. shot to the head, to the body. Eight. Down for a second Eight. time in this fight. You all right? You want to continue? Second time here in the second round. Look at me. You want to continue? Oh. They're all like delayed reaction shots. Yeah. He gets hit and he's like looking he's, for a place to go down. Yeah, he doesn't, he's not really, I don't think he's getting hurt more so that he looks uncomfortable and doesn't know how to get away from the assault. So he just goes down. Right. Nasty uppercut once and twice. Right. It is all over. Ismael Villarreal finishes it late in round two. That was a good stoppage. That wasn't going anywhere. Yeah. I'll keep my comments to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Ismael has now won nine of his last 11 fights by knockout or TKO. You got to look at some of the action. And you see that little short one, too. That wasn't really a hard one, too. It was just nice, short, accurate. Um, Martinez seemed like he wanted to go down anytime he got hit clean. I mean, I don't, you find yourself wondering why guys like this are even, what guys like this are even doing with a boxing license, even though he's 19 and 2 somehow. But I saw, I saw his record on box record. It's, it's very soft. But nonetheless, anytime he got hit clean, he was looking to go down. And, and, and sure enough, he did. Yeah, just like you said, Jamie, then none of those shots looked like he was hurt. Nah, he just, they were just clean. They weren't, even, they weren't even big, big shots. No. 
13 and 1. Now the record for Ismael Villarreal. His father from Ecuador. We mentioned both dad and grandpa boxers. It is the family business. And this young man scores another knockout. 13 thought, wins, nine knockouts, Paulie. I, I always thought from him was Dominican. Well, he may very well be, but his dad's from Ecuador, so that, that leaves mom in the in the thing, in the case, right? And if you're in the Bronx, a lot of Dominicans there. To make it official, Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest comes to a halt at 2 minutes 58 seconds of the second round due to the three knockdown rule. Your winner by technical knockout, El Ganador por Knockout Tecnico, Ismael Maeo Villarreal. Martinez wanted this fight and he did not fare very well with Villarreal scoring the finish in round number two. Again, I had mentioned that they were originally scheduled on a Charlo card back in January, but as Paulie mentioned, Charlo wants Canelo, and that is going to happen. And that means it is time for our big fight preview, Canelo and Charlo. You are um, not so high on Mr. Charlo's chances, but tell me what your, if, am I wrong about that? Well, you know, no, you're right. Charlo has the boxing ability. He just doesn't have the discipline mentally. Charlo has a good jab. He has that, he has that, he has that quick in and out. And let's, let me, let me tell you something. Canelo's feet are slow as molasses, bro. I mean, he's basically flat footed, slow as molasses. He cuts off the ring. Well, I'll say that, but ultimately Charlo has that little rhythm of that little slight in and out bop where he, he, he flies in with a, with a, with a deceptive uh, double jab right hand. But then you put a sofa on top of the Porsche. Think about that. All the extra weight that Charlo's got to put on. You put that on top of the Porsche. Then you drive the same way you did around that track. It's going to drive different. It's not going to be the same. It's not going to corner. It's not going to maneuver the same way. There's going to be some issues there. You know what I mean? So at 154, we know how good Charlo is. But at 168, we don't know what he's going to do. Canelo's got a really short torso. If you look at it, there's not a lot of ground to hit. There's not a lot of, there's not a lot of territory for, for Charlo to use as, as a target. Um, also, what I noticed from just from my tape review and watching um, watching Char watching both men, but Charlo, especially when he throws that jab to the body, he doesn't change levels really well. He a lot of times he throws that jab and he's got he's kind of straight up and he's encountered over the, over the top of right hands before, and I think that's going to be a, a big strategic tool uh, that's that Canelo's squad. I want to know something for both of you guys, Porsche Lamborghini. You 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 haul around a lot of sofas on your Lambo. No, 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 no. <laughs> but Charlo, in that analogy, Charlo is the Porsche. And so yes. by putting on the extra weight, you know, it's like a Porsche carrying a, a sofa. No, I, 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 I got what Tim was saying. <laughs> I just wanted to know if you would, you know, ruin the top of your car too, Chris. No, no, that's why, that's why I got two cars. <laughs> there you go. One for the sofa, one without the sofa. One for the dog and the sofa and one for, you know, cruising. Ten days away from that fight, a fight in which it's a bigger name and, and a matchup I think that people are more enthused about, Paulie, than the last couple of Canelo fights. Would that be accurate? Um, yeah, to a degree. Listen, I, I've said it on our shows, you know, we complain, we, you know, we want more, we want better. But as the fight gets closer, listen, it's a Canelo fight. It's a big boxing right. weekend. We all get excited. You know, let, let's, we know we are. You know what I'm saying? We're, going, we're, going, we're excited. And, and it's Charlo. I mean, yeah. Charlo's a very talented fighter. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he's one of the best it's guys in the world. It's his two weight classes blower, and that's what we're complaining. It's two well, weight classes, what? and he's been out of the ring for so it's long excellent fighters at their own weight class. Can it be a good fight at this weight class? We'll see. That'll be the interesting part. It is one in which, as Paulie said, though, it's always a celebration when Canelo Alvarez is in the ring, despite his opponent. 
Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, he's the face of boxing for, you know, for a reason. For as, for as long as he's with us, he's going to be a big name, and we're going to tune in when he fights. And we will tune in 10 days from today's Showtime pay-per-view, and uh, Paulie and Chris will be breaking that fight down immensely in the next coming days because here on Pro Box TV, we are your boxing channel. Pro Box TV is your boxing channel. There's nothing else like this in boxing. We are a 24 7 boxing streaming network dedicated only to the sweet science. We provide boxing fans daily news, delivered in print and in a never before seen video format from our state of the art studios in Florida. Along with daily talk shows every weekday, we also produce our own fights with our Wednesday night fight series, where we invite the best fighters who didn't make the cut for Showtime, ESPN, or DAZN, and want to prove they belong in the big ring. But there's a catch. They have to fight each other. No easy wins. That's right, 50-50 matchups, as we like to say, Good fighters in great fights. Three events per month, 40 per year. Now we aren't a promoter. We don't promote boxers. We don't compete with the championship networks. We cover and promote them all. We believe boxing should act as one and avoid being fragmented. We represent the fans and what they want. We promote boxing. We are your boxing channel. We are ProBox TV. And once again, we are with you on a Wednesday night as we get set for our co-main event, our tail of the tape for this light heavyweight matchup for the vacant WBA Intercontinental Light Heavyweight title. The Australian is 27. The Canadian is five years his elder. Kareem Hackett will have a seven inch reach advantage over Clay the Weapon Waterman. Fight scheduled for 10 rounds. With the official introductions, once again, Mark Lichtenfeld, as he is here with us all night long. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is scheduled for 10 rounds in the light heavyweight division for the vacant WBA Intercontinental Light Heavyweight title. Esta pelea, esta patada, a diez asaltos en el peso semi-pasado. La pelea es por el vacante campeonato intercontinental de peso semi-pasado de la WBA. Your judges for this bout, Dennis Devon, Joe Ware, and Brian Gary. And your referee in charge is Massimo Mantanini. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the purple with black, in la esquina azul, con pantalones morado y negro, pesando 175. Weighing in at 175 pounds, he is undefeated with a record of 11 wins, no losses, with six wins by knockout. Esta invicto con record 11 victorias, cero derrotas, con seis por la vía del knockout. From Los Angeles, California, via Toronto, Canada, please welcome Kareem Supreme Hackett. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white with gold, in la esquina rojo con pantalones blanco y dorado, pesando 174.4 libras, weighing in at 174.4 pounds. He is also undefeated. 11 wins, no losses, with eight wins by knockout. También está invicto con record 11 victorias, cero derrotas, con ocho por la vía del knockout. All the way from Logan, Australia, Clay the Weapon. Okay, that's my good. That's good, that's good. Clay the Weapon Waterman, Kareem Supreme Hackett. Light heavyweight matchup for the vacant WBA Intercontinental Light Heavyweight Belt. Here we go. It's time to fight. 
white and gold trunks for the Australian, the Southpaw, purple and black trunks, Kareem Hackett from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, but he has never fought in Canada. He fights tonight for the first time here on Pro Box TV. Long, wide stance for Hackett. You can see, you can see uh, Waterman going to try to close that gap right away. And Hackett on that back foot. Southpaw looking to set up those counters. Interesting clash of styles here. You could see that aggressive body language already by Waterman. Nice little pot shot there by Hackett. Hackett very driven, a hard worker. Of all the qualities in which were talked about pre-fight, Julian Chawa's manager said his fight IQ is what really separates him from the rest. 11-0 against 11-0. Aggressive start for Waterman. Hackett looking for the body. Yeah, Hackett trying to pick his shots, trying to use that probing lead hand, which I think is smart, you know, is force Waterman to get by it. And if you keep Waterman on the end of that, even if he's coming forward, you can keep him on the end of some sharp punches with the left hand. Waterman's going to have to close that gap a little better. He's not going to, he can't, he's got to get out of that middle range. He's going to be effective because right at that middle range is where uh, Hackett can use that probing shot to keep him at a middle range distance so he can get enough leverage on the left hands. That's what Waterman wants to do there. Using a double right hand to get inside. That was smart. Round one picking up here. Two unbeatens in our co-main event tonight. Hackett to the body. Seven-inch reach advantage. Waterman, a self-described competitive and feisty kid. Who loves to utilize the jab. Sometimes it's tricky to jab on those southpaws, but you still want to use that jab. Waterman trying to press his way in, not really using that jab. But he's used a, a double right hand to a pretty good effectiveness. Trying to get inside that seven inch reach advantage. corner and John Scully from the Arthur Better BF camp as well. Waterman has spent a lot of time in Canada sparring with Arthur Better BF. He said and I quote Better BF is the man. Round number two Clay Waterman the Aussie in the white and gold trunks purple and black trunks for Kareem Hackett. Hackett has had multiple with Cerdo Ramirez, who held the super middleweight title from 2016 to 2019. Nice uppercut scored by Hackett. Cerdo, the first boxer from Mexico to win a major world title in that weight class. Hackett considers him a teammate. Good body, good body shot there. 
Like you mentioned, the first round, champ, we have a really interesting clash of styles here. Both men, you know you know what each guy wants to do, which is who can do it. Right now, Hackett's having doing a really good job staying on the outside, staying long, using that reach and that southpaw position to keep Waterman on the outside of his shots. Waterman, the Australian, has trained with Better Biev in Canada. The Canadian has ever fought in his home country. This tonight is sixth fight in the U.S., five in Mexico, one in Ecuador. And coming on very strong here in round two. Yeah, he's looking good right now. Yeah, it's gonna, the, the, the onus is on Waterman to keep that pressure on. He ends up staying in that middle range. Hackett is gonna be able to pick him apart. I think in Hackett's corner, he's also got Julian Chua. Yes, he does. Yep. I just didn't know if I recognized Julian with that new hairdo. I was, I was looking at him. So I know both trainers here, because I know Scully a long time as well in this fight. Brick House Boxing Club in L.A. We got excellent trainers in both corners today. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't recognize Julian with that new hairdo. <laughs> well, whenever I don't see you in years, though, I'm always liable not to recognize. <laughs> And you, and you got, you know, guys you knew in the amateurs who are now grandfathers, Paulie. Yeah. It's like a reunion for you. Oof. Well, remind me. <laughs> oh. oh. Nice pop shot there from Hackett. Right down the middle. And Waterman carries those hands a little bit low. Yeah, and Hackett also, took advantage. And he also doesn't give you a lot of head movement on the way in. He's kind of trying to force his way in, but there's not a lot of head movement there. Oh. Shuttle punch down to the solar plexus. That was a really nasty shot. Yeah. And, and, and Waterman's going to have to get that head movement rhythm, not just for defensive purposes, but also to be a little bit deceptive on his attack. Because otherwise, you know, Hackett is going to be able to anticipate his attack a little, a little too much. And that's what he's starting to do. That's why he's starting to see those little counter body shots <laughs> landed by Hackett. Nice round, smooth boxing by Hackett. Yeah, Hackett, Hackett's looking very comfortable. And Chua is, gives, gives him that nod on the way in. Like, yeah, I like what I saw. Hey, we see that pop straight left hand down the middle from Hackett. And again, champ, like you said, Waterman is hanging out in that middle yeah. distance and yeah. he's getting picked apart yeah. by Hackett, who's being real slick and picking his punches really well. And I'll tell you what the cool thing about that timing was there by Hackett. Waterman had had decent success with that double right hand. Right there, he's trying to throw the double right hand. He gets caught between right hands with the body shot. Good timing shot by Hackett. Dude, if Waterman needs to be more explosive to close that distance. Yeah. He's starting to slow already. And also more deceptive. He, if he does it off the head movement, too, people think head movement, is just, head movement is just for defense, but head movement is also for, for your attack as well because he kind of gives you that deceptive rhythm and all of a sudden you fire off that rhythm. And he, there's, nothing, there's nothing there by Waterman. And in our fighter interviews, as I mentioned before, Julian said of all the attributes that Kareem brings into the boxing ring, that high fight IQ is one of them, and you saw him utilize some great technique and some great strategy in round number two. Yeah, he's round very three. Slick very, very slick tonight. Is and you don't see a lot of technical guys from Australia. It's weird. They're all like super tough guys. That's why like, I can appreciate Tim Zhu, because he's actually technical. Yes. You know, most of those guys in Australia, all my life. I mean, going back to Jeff Fennick and stuff, they're, they're just rugged, tough, tough, sturdy guys. So they, you, they have to be in greatly conditioned, and they have to really go through a lot of punishment to be successful. And Waterman's going to have to force his way in here. Otherwise, Hackett's going to grow in confidence, and it's going to get even more difficult. Well, Waterman's already in a place where he needs to make a big change because he's taking a lot of leather on the way, on the way in. And even when he does get in, he's not getting any work done. Both men 11 and 0. Waterman coming off a unanimous decision victory in June. And a fifth round knockout victory for Hackett in May. Waterman learned to keep that elbow a little tighter on that, on that counter body shot. I think he might have felt one or two of them earlier because there, there Hackett looked through that counter and, and Waterman had the elbow tucked. And one of the oh, oh. left hand to the body. And remember, that's the liver side. I mean, yep. it, it just it's coming from the back end because Hackett's a southpaw. Those are not going to tickle if they keep getting through. Hackett mixes up that left hand really nice. Pops it straight. Doesn't have a lot of fat on the punch. Shows it right down the middle. It's one of those punches where the glove just gets bigger until it hits you. I mean, Waterman is going to have to be a little bit more decent. He's not giving that rhythm. Maybe some feints. Maybe some change of look. Something. 
Quick hands here, then hack it in the corner, and a good flurry for the weapon, Clay hit, Waterman. Hit. Go back, team, back. get through there. Yeah, not a lot got through. So he's got to keep working off of that. It, it, again, it's a little bit of a confidence build that you can get through, but you've got to be more consistent because nothing really got through there to bother Hackett. Yeah, it's just one good left hook upstairs, but that was about it. Again to the body. Waterman says no, which means it probably hurt. Adjusting to the distance well there. 30 seconds on the clock, round number three. Mike Goldberg, the Magic Man, the former two-time world champion, Pauli Malignaggi, former world champion, Chris Algieri, here on a Wednesday night on Pro Box TV. We got two guys 11-0 going for it. What's more Pro Box TV than that? Wow, and another hard shot. Another good round for Kareem Hackett. Waterman's having him, and he closed the gap, and he smothered himself. So he's got to try to rush in, but also leave enough space to have that punching distance. Good. The only, everything is damn near perfect. The only thing that I could be, if I'm being pessimistic, Going off balance there is does Waterman gets a little frustrated as he's uh, showing the gloves like what you got nothing there. Here's where Waterman actually gets close, but as you can see, nothing really gets. There's a good little left hook there, forces the gloves up to come up, gloves to come up from uh, from Hackett. That was the body shot from Hackett as well. It was a good moment Waterman had, but again, it's got to be consistent. Boom. This fight for the vacant WBA Intercontinental Light Heavyweight title continues round four. Hack at the Southpaw in the purple and black trunks, white and gold for Clay Waterman. Both men 11 and 0. Hundred and fifty-nine amateur fights for Clay Waterman all around the world. Germany, Poland, China, Serbia. From Logan City, Australia. That guy has a nice rhythm going up, upstairs, downstairs, changing looks, giving little feints, using his legs to change the distance. Waterman's on one gear. And that one gear is not working, so he's and he's not really adjusting either. Lands the occasional good shot there. But the consistency uh -huh. just not uh -huh. there. It's few and far between, and it's just not explosive enough. The, the punches aren't heavy enough. They're not laying clean enough. Hackett's just having his way. I really like what I'm seeing from him. Hackett now training in Los Angeles. Just missed with that left hand. And yes, his first name is Kareem because both his mom and dad, huge Kareem Abdul-Jabbar fans. And their son is a heck of a boxer. Good moments here for Waterman. Got double left hook, moved, moved Hackett a little bit. Now Waterman actually defending a little better. Let's see if he can close that gap a little more. See, these are the moments right here that he just can't have. You can't have these middle range moments where you're doing nothing and you're hanging around at middle range. Is he gonna give Hackett a chance to get, get back into a rhythm? And there's a good little shot to the body by Hackett. Yeah, every time Hackett's allowed to reset, he takes control once again. And, and it's up to Waterman to be cognizant of that. Well, Waterman's gotta go for broke. He's gotta, he's gotta push the pace. He's gotta put leather on him. Because if he stays on the outside or in that middle distance, he's getting picked apart. Hack Hackett is just too slick. Oh, good, good body, body shot. shot. When Waterman does attack, there is a high level of explosiveness. He just needs those shots to land. He needs to do it more often. I think yeah. he, needs to, he needs to stop letting Hackett arrest. Cut the ring off and keep yeah. firing. Yeah, the one the issue with Waterman has, and he's not having a bad round here, but the issue he has is he's either at zero or he's at 100. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have anything in the middle. Uh, 
our co-main event continues. Boxing Channel, 24-7, 365 news talk shows. And of course, every other Wednesday, we are here live from our world headquarters in Tampa, Florida. This is your night. Hackett's relationship with Zerto Ramirez, outstanding. They've been sparring, working together for a long time, and generally close to the same weight. Waterman in the white and gold, Hackett in the purple and black. Talked about the many times that Clay Waterman has worked with Arthur Betterbia. see how Waterman would be a good sparring partner because he's he's durable, um, not 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 chinny, got probably good chin, physically strong, gives you that will probably give you that consistent work. I'm sure he is feeling the shots from Kareem Hackett, but he was asked like how hard does better be on hit me in sparring and he said I don't think anyone punches harder than him. Yeah I've, I've heard yeah stories about his sparring and it's it's legendary. Soft-spoken, very humble. Waterman called it the best experience of his life. Good head movement there, Paulie. Yeah, yeah. Just got to close that range off of it. Nice. He's got a little spot to where he's closed the gap, and he does good work. There's, there's more good work for Waterman. Break, break. Go back. Go Again, back. let's see off the break what he does here. This is where he's been going wrong. Right? Off the break, he starts, 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 goes back into that first gear and allows Hackett to have that middle range. And he's got to have less of that and more of this here. So a slip move by Hackett. Waterman, eight of his 11 wins by Bust. knockout. Hackett, six of his 11 wins by knockout. Yeah, I mean, with Waterman, you can see the path to victory. You can see what he needs to do. He just needs to do more of it. Yeah, it's the nice, clever work there by Hackett, you know, it, overall in, in the fight. You know, he, you know, he's got a kind of a, an idea of what he wants to do. He knows how to make it happen. Ooh, and uh, he doesn't he left. doesn't come he out of his shell. Left. And he mixes his shots, you know, Pretty decently well. well. It goes, goes down to the body, goes down to the head. Left hand. Yep. He'll give you feints, something I think Waterman should be doing. But in reality, it's been pretty much only Hackett who's giving you the feints. Waterman goes by the nickname The Weapon. When our lead Spanish broadcaster, Ricardo Celis, asked him during the fighter interview, which one is the weapon, left or right, he said, both. So let's see what he utilizes here after a couple of very strong rounds for Hackett. Waterman, the more energetic fighter in this round five. He has been stepping up. Waterman has been stepping up the, the intensity of the last two rounds. Final seconds of the round. And in the last two rounds, it could be one of those fights where it's what you like. You know, a lot of times the judges, especially down here, I, I notice they, they, they give more credit to the pressure. So many different subjects cover here on ProBox TV. He's a world-class fighter. I'm going to disagree. I really feel it's my time. Think it's my... I like the uh, the look in sparring session, Chris. One of, your, one of the eight times you graduated with some type of honor, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we have a we have a good time with sparring sessions. Set for round number six. This is the first time Kareem Hackett has been scheduled for ten rounds. 
scheduled for eight rounds just one time, and he did go the distance in that fight. Purple and black for Kareem Hackett. White and gold for the Aussie Clay Waterman. Left hand connects once, and then just grazed the chin of Waterman the second time. There's those quick hands again, and the explosiveness. And Hackett has to be careful not to put himself out of position when he makes a defensive move, because that's what Waterman's looking for. Waterman's looking for an overcommitment on defense. Good body shot there. The timing shot by Hackett. Go back, go back, go back. Go back. Waterman's looking for an overcommitment on defense on the part of Hackett so he can hit him while he's out of position. Yeah, two in a it's row, good. body good. shots. That's one well, way to stem, well, someone's, stem the flow of someone's attack. Bang that body. Oh, again. You would think Waterman would faint at least at a certain point, when knowing that Hackett's looking for the same thing, any reaction throw that body shot. You would think there would be a faint at least after three in a row. I haven't seen a faint yet from Waterman. No. Head movement there. There's a little slight faint, but nothing enough that it's actually going to be noticeable uh, to, to work on Hackett. Yeah, I mean, with a faint, you got, you got to sell it. You yeah. got to sell it enough that your opponent's actually going to make a re have a reaction. Oh, I can't you can hear that one. That was a nice sweeping, ripping body shot. Five wins in 2022. Tonight, the third fight here in 2023 for Clay Waterman. Nice boxing this round from Hackett. Tell you, but gotta give those Australians credit though, man. Waterman is in shape. Yeah. Continuously bringing that pressure. Sometimes you like to see him up the tempo of that pressure, but he's been coming forward the whole fight. And Paulie Waterman, the first Australian to win an amateur hey. world championship. No. No, hey. no. He did so back in 2011. At what age? Bronze medalist at the 2018 Commonwealth Games. Just missed the opportunity to represent Australia at the 2020 Olympic Games. You know, Goldie, he said both of his hands are the weapons, but that left hook, that thing is screaming when he throws it. I think I think that's the best weapon of Waterman so far that I've seen. Yeah, it's been sharp when he when he's gotten close and he's able to land it. That's been the shot that that's probably the left hands on both guys. I mean, Hackett's left hand to the body has been good. And now uh, yeah, it's Waterman. been the variation of Hackett's left hand and the, the, the ferocity of the left hand from from Waterman. Waterman. He's got a real, real sharp left hook. There it is again. Gotta sell it a little better, like you said, Chief. You know? Hackett feeling himself because he's, he's got Waterman missing. Waterman saying, hey, don't kill him, keep running around. Is it just me or is Hackett really big for this weight class? Yeah, it's I mean, not just you. He's oh, yeah. really big. He is tall and long and thick. I don't know, man. I just think Waterman's small for the weight class. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's what I was this trying is, to figure this out. This is light heavyweight. Six, two and a half. Oh. 79 inch reach for Kareem Hackett. That was one of those take those with you. Yeah, take, take, take that to the corner. The belt. Body's getting punished in this matchup. Yeah, very smart. That was, that was borderline there, actually. But you know, and this was, this was when Waterman was coming on. Hackett was. He had a little bit of success, and he was like, all right, let me let me touch that body, slow him down, and it worked. So that was down. actually another good round for him. You don't even got to go to him if you don't want to go to him. He's got the deficit, but he has to close. You know what I'm saying? Just keep boxing him the way you're doing. Let it come to you. You get what I'm saying? Round seven. He got three rounds left, okay? Just don't let your level of Brother Ty in the corner of Clay Waterman. Our co-main event for the vacant WBA Intercontinental Light Heavyweight title continues. Round number seven, Hackett comes out firing. And again. Hackett looks super calm, wasn't out of breath at all in the corner. Very much in control. And there's long reach in that long straight left again, trying to go right up the middle to and the body. And all he really needs is that probing hand. And there's no head movement on the part of Waterman. So if he gives that probing lead hand and he keeps it out there just measuring, I mean, Waterman's not really going to get through with it. And he's going to keep him at a distance where the left hand, when he throws it, he's going to have leverage on him because it's going to be at a proper distance. But you see, sometimes he doesn't always use that probing hand. You see, now he's got it back back at home, but look, when he uses that probing hand, look, Waterman just gives him that high guard and then gives him that left hand. Again to the body. It's pretty, the game plan is pretty easy against a guy who doesn't move his head and comes forward, but you just gotta be able to stick with it. Julian Child said that Hackett knows how to take 
his opponents out of their game plan. And you can tell this is the type of fight that Waterman likes, and Hackett pushes him right out of the corner. But again, Waterman's able to get close. He's able to get close when, at a distance, when when Hackett doesn't use that probing lead hand. Watch him, Hackett use that probing lead hand. Waterman is a sitting duck at middle range, right where Hackett wants him. When, the, when that lead hand is not being used, Waterman's able to, at times, explode in. Mike Colbert, my powerful partners, the Magic Man, uh -huh. Paul Malinaji, Chris Back. Algieri. No, 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 Great no, to be with you here on a Wednesday night from our world headquarters in Tampa, Florida. Over the top by Hackett. keep trying but if he doesn't start changing the gears a little bit he's gonna be easy to it's gonna be easy for Hacker to see what's coming. Hackett doing a really good job of being a ring general. Steps back to the center of the ring, circles out, doesn't spend too much time along the ropes. I'm telling you all he needs is that lead hand probing and he'll Waterman's not gonna do anything. Now he's starting to back Waterman up. That so probing hand landed to the face. That's the one we talked no, about no, earlier. No, that was a heavy shot. Yeah. Oh, Waterman's got a good chin, though, man. He's done a lot of times. Australia, one thing about Australia is they always got good chins, man. Always in shape, always conditioned, always good chins. No, he's, he's still very much in there. I mean, he got rocked by a good shot, but Waterman's tough. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. I haven't met one tough. that isn't tough and durable yet. Yeah, man. What do you got in the UFC? Volkanovski? Yep. <laughs> and many others. Yeah. Robert Whitaker. Very good. Okay. Robert Whitaker's tough. Rugged, yep. rugged dudes right. down there, man. Tough. Big time. See some action from that last round. Heck, had a great round. First time we really saw Waterman get hurt with a shot. It was that looping left hand first. I caught him right in the chin, and then a straight left right behind that. And he did such a good job of not getting hit with the uppercut. You're like, oh, man, he's not getting hit with the uppercut. And, and then bang. <laughs> so he takes, <laughs> takes something else instead yeah. with the left hand. Yeah, Hackett went for two uppercuts, couldn't land those, but then just turned it into an overhand right, overhand left. You don't feel like, don't feel like you've got a rush or nothing, all right? Okay. He's slick, he's timing. You got Ty, I drink out of my shoe. Yeah, Another Ty, yeah. Another one who's tough. Jack Della Maddalena and many others. Bunch of Australian friends, but I don't know if I don't know if Shuey's it for me. Yeah. <laughs> Eighth round. This one's scheduled for ten. Hackett has not slowed at all. If anything, he's picked it up. Yeah. You know, when you're in control of the pace, it's, it's very different. You know, he's obviously in good shape, but also he's in control of the pace, so he's not getting pushed beyond where he's comfortable. And this is just the second time Waterman has been scheduled for 10. The first time, he finished Mark Lucas in the fifth round to win the Australian light heavyweight title. So soon to be on chartered waters if this fight continues into round number nine. Encountering well. Hey, hey. And Hackett not afraid to use his physicality. Pushes you off. And again, Hack Waterman is sitting dunk, no head movement. And Hackett upstairs, downstairs. 90 seconds left here in round eight. Oh. And Hackett still being defensively sound, not taking any more risks just because he's having his way. Oh. Still, still dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Big time. And, and that's what his trainer talked about. He's driven, he's a hard worker, he feels he's one of the best in the world. Finally getting a big chance tonight on Pro Box TV. 
but it's his fight IQ and his adaptability that could very well be the key element to lead him to 12 and 0. And again, that one short range, Chris. Yeah, that was a that was a tricky little nasty uppercut on the inside there. Yeah, timely shot as he caught ha caught uh, Waterman coming in. And that's the thing; those are the kind of shots that are now giving Waterman second second doubts about trying to close that distance too much. And Hackett growing in confidence while Waterman slowing down. Yeah, we're seeing Waterman on his heels a lot more, and he just he's not an effective fighter getting pushed back. Kareem Supreme Hackett said he's also known as the Toronto Technician. I think that's a very adept uh, nickname as well. He has been very much the Toronto Technician tonight. And he has been very supreme. Hackett feeling himself. Well, he should be. His coach Julian Chu is liking what he's seeing. There's two rounds left, okay? You get an opportunity to get active. See some of that slickness of Hackett along the ropes. He's done a really nice job of being elusive, even with his back against the ropes. And when he does, which I really like, is he comes back firing. Makes yeah. you miss and makes you pay for it. Keeps calm, even at that close range. He slicked that close range, and then he fight. He's not, he's, he's calm enough to fire right back at close range. These are some of the shots as well. Good, good creativity going down to the body, back upstairs, around the side to the body, and down the middle to the head. Makes it that much more difficult to anticipate him defensively. Round number nine. The winner will leave with the WBA Intercontinental Light Heavyweight Belt. Hackett in the purple and black trunks, white and gold for Clay Waterman. Waterman has had moments of aggression, punches and bunches, but Hackett has truly been, as I mentioned before, the Toronto technician. I like that name, Toronto Technician. Yeah. That's a good one. He's living up to it. Oh, turns the corner and dials it up more. Ooh, that was slick. That was slick. Stepped outside and cracked him with a right hook. Waterman's going to bite down on that mouthpiece and leave it all in the Pro Box TV ring. But Hackett. Unless something drastic changes, he's on his way to 12 and 0. Both men entering 11 and 0 in their professional careers. Yeah, Hackett is on a different level tonight. You think Waterman doesn't have the ideas, man? You know, he's trying, but he's, uh, he's out of ideas. It's not a big bag of tricks in the part of Waterman. It's just pretty much effort. Well, Hackett does have the bag of tricks, and he's using them. Now he's starting to dig real deep in that bag, mixing things up, showing stuff we haven't even seen yet. If Hackett wanted to, I really think he could go forward and push Waterman back and look to get a stoppage. I mean, there's not much coming back from Waterman at this point. It's not having trouble finding him. Hackett, a true student of the game as well. He said that Zerto Ramirez loves to teach. Could see him being a coach when he is done with his professional career. And Hackett talked about the ideologies and the mindset of Muhammad Ali. Good jabs on the part of Hackett, Southpaw jab does not forget the body. Snuck in a nice left, hook, left uh, hand to the body in the middle of that. And just the patience that Hackett has and the ability to wait for that moment in which his combinations will connect or they've been set up perfectly. Well, that's 
that thing. I mean, Waterman, I, I noticed over the course of the fight, he's one of those guys that call your turn, my turn. He does yeah. not punch with you. He only punches when he leads. If you're punching at him, the best he can do is try to make you miss, but he doesn't know how to counter punch. He's, it's, it's the very basic stuff. Of, of, uh, of boxing, the very basics of boxing. He's not terrible, but your turn, my turn, is you're not gonna get to a world-class level unless you can punch in between, guys. Look at that first round, nine rounds don't matter. It, you gotta get him. You have to get him this round. You gotta get him out of there, you understand? You have to throw everything you've got. You gotta move your head on the way in. Yeah. Start at the body, come up to the head. You gotta dig down, you gotta get this, this round, you understand? Everything is on the line right here. There's no other way to say it. You gotta get him this round. Take some water. That's right. Don't let your level of attention fall at all, okay? Watch out the inside. Watch out on the inside. Last round. New champion. Let's go. Touch. Last round, guys. You are very professional, my friend. I like that. Don't let your level of attention fall. Last round, and you become the champion. Hackett again punishing the body of the Aussie. Oh, my goodness. Two back to back. Right hands to the body. You heard Ty Waterman, Clay's brother, saying, you got to leave it all in the ring right here, right now. The first nine don't matter. You have got to finish Hackett, which is not going to be easy. Can never say impossible until that final bell. Improbable, perhaps. At least allegedly, right, Paulie? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to say never anymore. <laughs> oh, timing shots again from Hackett. Just a slip and rip to the body. Paul out with that lead hand, looking to set up that big straight left again. You know what's also impressive? This is only Hackett's 12th pro fight. Yeah. He looks very, very good. Very, very well schooled. Very slick. Very well rounded. Yep. For 12 pro fights, man, that's, that's very impressive. And he's been boxing consistently well for all 10 rounds. Most guys don't even have ten, a 10-rounder in their first 12 fights. Yeah, good point. Second 10-rounder for Waterman. Under a minute remain. The Aussie coming on strong, going to leave it all right in front of our broadcast position. Break. No punch, break. No punch, no punch. 40 you know, seconds. You know, Paul, you talked about the toughness of the Aussies, you know, the good chin, whatever. Even his face, though, he's not even getting marked up. <laughs> How strange is it? Well, they built out of something it different. Might, it might mark up later, though, man. Sometimes. Yeah, no, definitely. But Sometimes still, but, like, but right now, it's yeah. like, wow. He's not bad, right? No, I'd, I'd look like a tomato. Me <laughs> too. Waterman just made his U.S. debut June 9th on Showbox. This is second fight in the United States. Final seconds. Again, the probing always works yep. for Hackett. If he would have done that, I'm telling you, Waterman went out and ended up punch all night. Hackett and Waterman set to go the distance. Stop. I was impressed. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him again. Pick it up from the second. Yeah, 
I mean, here we see the long range attacks in control of the ring from Hackett all night long. It's a lot of Waterman trying to close the gap, but really, even when he did, Hackett did a really good job of rolling, sliding, being slick with the upper body rhythm, and then answering and firing. And then the body work in the second half of the fight from Hackett was really, really exceptional. Found right hooks to the body, straight left hands down the middle, very, very sneaky with a lot of those shots. And really just started to pour on more and more pressure as the fight went on. I mean, he was still moving backwards, but still being a, a, a pressure fighter, a, like a boxer pressure fighter. It was, it was very impressive. Picked his punches really well, buried up the, le the left hand ex in an excellent way. And really, just Waterman had no answer for the slickness and the left hands of Hackett tonight. Here we see combinations, cutting angles. Very impressive stuff from Hackett. And again, only his 12th pro fight. Final round. And it was more of the same. Hackett started fast, landed a couple good body shots. Feeling very confident once that final bell rang, as he should feel. It goes the full 10 rounds. We are set to make it official, and once again, we get it up to Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 hard-fought rounds, we go to the scorecards. Brian Gary scores about 99-91. Noventa Inueve on Noventa Uno. Joe Ware and Dennis Devon both scored about 100 to 90. Cien a Noventa. El ganador, Intercontinental de Peso Semi Pasado Campeonato Double OBA. And now the WBA Intercontinental Light Heavyweight Champion, Kareem yeah. Supreme Hackett. The belt goes to the Toronto Technician. A spectacular performance, winner by unanimous decision, handing the Aussie Clay Waterman the first loss of his professional career and capturing the WBA Intercontinental Light Heavyweight Belt. Coming up next, it is our main event of the evening. And it is a good one. Chukumbayev from Kazakhstan, Roldan from Argentina, and they are fighting for the WBA Continental North America Super Lightweight Championship. Our main event is scheduled for 10 rounds on a Wednesday night right here on Pro Box TV. I'll tell you what, we have a feature and a segment each week called Deep Waters. Waterman was in deep waters for the majority of that fight. But this time with Deep Waters, what are our guys talking about? Well, let's find out as we have another edition of Deep Waters. And, and I think the subject here has something to do with Kings. We are talking about the four Kings. Thomas Hearns is this destroyer a right-hand destroyer. The mm -hmm. Pepino Cuevas fight, which is supposed to be a huge fight, supposed to be a big test, supposed to be like, you know, like, I don't know, this this, this could be something. He gets iced. June 20th, 1980, the brawl for it all. Sugar Ray Leonard took on Roberto Duran for the first time. Duran was a maybe the greatest lightweight in history. He moved up in weight to face off against Sugar Ray. Yeah, I, I mean, I got this one at number two because of that, because of Roberto Duran and because of the antics leading up to the fight and because of the bad blood. I, 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 I loved it. I loved it. Like, and, and Duran wasn't acting. He wasn't playing a mind game. He felt that way. So this was a fight that, when, when the fight lives up to the hype, and this one did it just in a matter of seconds, maybe the greatest round in the history of boxing round one. Lived up to the hype and knocked it out of the park. It's, mm. I mean, it's, it's insane. I think this might be undisputed the the best round in history. I'm pretty sure everyone says that because this this fight is absolutely it's primal. It's just mm. it's just pure savagery. Both these guys had it in this fight. They both, again, I mentioned that delusion in their minds. They were like, I have to kill this man. Oh, 
always entertaining deep waters and we will be back of course two weeks from tonight october 4th our main event you know Pablo very well. Polly, you fought him many years ago, 2012. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure did. I know Zach Ochoa too. You know, he's a New York kid. I've known him since, uh, probably since he was in the amateurs. Steve. I'm old, man. <laughs> that seems to be a theme tonight, Chris. The Puerto Rican fighting out of Brooklyn, and of course, the former WBA interim super lightweight champion. Plus, Blast is back. Daryl Val Saint, 9 0, with seven knockouts. And 20 year old Oscar Alvarez looking to rebound from his first career loss. So the hits just keep coming, and there seems to be this theme of Polly's land here tonight, isn't there, Chris? <laughs> yeah, no, we're talking about the hits. I mean, I mean, you've had a great summer, and summer's usually a slow time in boxing. Right. Not here in Pro Box TV, uh, man. We have had barn burners uh, every two weeks. It's, so nothing's going to change. It's always boxing season here at Pro Box. Yes, right. Oh, yeah. right. And, and Polly. Is it because of Chris coming in and becoming part of our team and our family that everything's leveled up? I can't say it hurt us. It is, right? I'm not gonna. I'm not, I can't say it hurt us. I'm gonna. I'm gonna blame the matchmakers. <laughs> that's not. That's not me, man. I just. I, I got a perfect. I got an easy job. I get to see great fights. But whoever's putting these fights together, every one of our cards. It's like we have two main events every yeah. night. Yeah. That's the, and that. That's the biggest thing. It's our, our our cards are deep. And they're, they're short, but they're deep. And mind you, tonight we were supposed to have Lester Martinez against Lionel Thompson. Which, Thompson pulled out. That was another. Good fight on paper. Legitimate, legitimate main event type fight. Yeah, and Lester Martinez, his first appearance on Pro Box looked absolutely outstanding. All right, let's talk about this main event. You had the red corner earlier. You can buy of what will we look to see from him tonight, Paul? A uh, solid boxer. Um, you know, I think he puts on good pressure. He's very, very strong puncher. You know, a uh, solid, solid punching power. A lot of those Eastern Europeans uh, do have that reputation of being big punchers, especially with an opponent who is not a big puncher. I think it could be a good clash of styles. And and Chris, you said rolled on. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't care about any of that. He's no. just here to win the strike. He's here to win the fight. And you know, I, I've, I've watched him fight before. It's very scrappy. You know, he, and, and like a lot of Argentinian fighters, he's in great condition. He's very, very scrappy. He's here to win. You know, and by any means necessary. He's not a puncher, but it doesn't matter. He's going to go in there and act like one. And the other night, Paulie, we talked about Argentinian or Argentine and. I did. I, I did some homework, Chris. Either one is acceptable. Yes. And, I, and I'm not saying that about you. I was talking about when, when I thought I messed up. Yeah. <laughs> and I get messed up on my all, own. All is good. All is good. Paulie says all is good. Allegedly. Our tail of the tape for this, our main event of the evening. Zhukabayev is 32 years old, two years the elder of Roldan, a little bit taller. And Argentina's Hugo Alberto Roldan will have the reach advantage. This is our main event. It is scheduled for 10 rounds, and another belt is on the line. With the official introductions, Mark Lichtenfeld. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is our main event of the evening. 10 rounds for the vacant WBA Continental North America Super Lightweight title. Está en el evento principal, Palea Patada a Diaz a Saltos en el peso Super Leguero. La pelea es por el vacante campeonato Continental Americas del Norte WBA. Scheduled for 10 rounds. Your judges for this contest, Los Jueces, Shami Shipman, Dennis Devon and Joe Ware. Your referee in charge is Emil Lombardi. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. We're in the light blue with white. In la skin azul, con pantalones azul y blanco. Pisando, 139.8 libras. Weighing in at 139.8 pounds. His record, 22 wins, one loss, one draw, with seven wins by knockout. Con record, 22 victorias, una derrota y un empate con siete por la vía del knockout de Santiago del Estero, Argentina, Hugo Alberto El Ñato Roldan. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red with black. In la esquina rojo con pantalones rojo y negro, pisando 139.8 libras, weighing in at 139.8 pounds. His record, 20 wins, just one loss, with 16 wins by knockout. Con record, 20 victorias, una derrota, 
Bell. Yes, he says, for the Via del Knockout from Montreal, Quebec, Canada, via Almaty, Kazakhstan. He is Dr. Juden Protect yourself at all times, all right? Touch them up, wait for the bell. Our main event of the evening, 10 rounds for the WBA Continental North America Super Lightweight Champion, Jukumbayev, rolled on. A combined 42 career wins. Time. Here we go. It's time to fight. Red and black trunks for 777. Kazakhstan's Batazan Jukumbayev. 20 wins, 16 knockouts. Light blue and white trunks for Argentina's Hugo Alberto Roldan. These guys both had fire in their eyes looking at each other from yes. across the ring before the announcements. Yeah, you can see that early jitters too. There's a lot of, lot, lot of energy inside these guys right now. Let's see how it plays out. Seven first round finishes for Jukumbayev. Roldan actually fights kind of jittery. You see him jumping in, lunging in. This is this is his and style. This, and this is righty versus lefty. That lunging in could lead to some head clashes. So you gotta be careful. Nice kind of left hand. A nice right hand. Okay. okay. I think Jukumbayev thought he was going to step back and counter with the left hand, but he stepped back with too much momentum. He kept going backwards, and then the right hand put, knocked him down. I don't think it was a, a shot that hurt him, but I think it was momentum kept taking him backwards, so the getting hit with that shot increased the backwards momentum when he fell. He just landed another right hand Roldan did. He did. I told you to watch out for Roldan, man. He's not coming here to lose. And no, Chris, it's a quick one, too. Oh, good and, left and hand. a quick one, too. Answered back, Pauly. <laughs> Roldan, I love how he fights like the puncher. <laughs> yeah, I told you, I told you that. He, he, comes, a... he comes in acting like the puncher. Don't let those six, six knockouts fool you. This guy's going to pretend, this guy's going to uh, act like the puncher. And Drew Kumbayev got to land some good timing oh. shots, too. But Roldan, nice, exciting start. Went southpaw and landed a moment ago. Roldan's tricky, man. He, he switches sides and he fires out of nowhere. Very tough, very durable. Second fight here in the United States. What a great round one. There's going to be a head clash in this fight. Okay. <laughs> well, Dan's following up with his head every single time. I always feel like Argentinian fighters are one of two ways. They're either like Roldan, Dan, and they're very awkward and scrappy and, exp and explosive and come forward in great shape and durable, or they're really classy good boxers. Yeah, like Nicolino Loche right. or, or Sergio right. Martinez. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Roll down. Or like Omar Vies. You know, yeah. like yeah. Omar Vies too, yeah. yeah. Roll down is definitely A, Chris. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely he'd be the scrappy, explosive, more athletic than, than, uh, than classically trained. And sometimes you get the guys that fight like Roll Dan, but they can punch like Maidana. Yes. <laughs> What a start to our main event of the evening. Well, that's basically Maidana without the heavy hands, but yeah. he shows some good hands there. I don't think a lot of people expected him to score a knockdown in the first round. Let's, let's take a see, look at that. Let's see, this looks even what is what I thought here, but Jokumbaya goes back, at, yeah, maybe a little bit of feet too. I got tangled. He hit him with a right hand, a good no, right hand at first. He did, he did get hit, but it might have been the feet too that got tangled. Wasn't a great yeah. Yeah. Batuzan, only loss, his 20 and one in his career was to Subriel Matias back in May of 2021. 
Round number two. And I had mentioned from the top, he was very much in that fight. Yeah. He had Matias hurt on several different occasions in that fight, uh, was handling himself quite well until the, the power punching of Matias finally caught up. Joseph Adorno, the only man to defeat Hugo Alberto Roldan. That was a 10-round unanimous decision oh. September of last year. That's a slip. slip. Come here, come here. And Roldan got hit when he's down. That's yeah, why he's saying like, yeah. That was a real hard shot that he took while on the way down. Or, or, or while he was already down. Big power displayed by both men early. You see what happens? Drew Bayer has to go backwards. Hurt him again. Hurt him again. Drew Bayer has to go backwards because he's going to get butted if he, if he just tries to stop these shots. I'm right, I'm right. But the thing about Rodan is he doesn't just throw one punch. He steps through, punches with both hands. And you see, you don't want to lose positioning by stepping by stepping back, but if you don't step back, you get butted. So Jukumbayev is sort of in a in a in an awkward position when he's when he's got punches coming his way. He's between a, a head and a right hand. Yeah. <laughs> a rock and a hard place. Yeah, because if he goes straight back, he's out of position and, and Roldan continues with the assault, just throws punches. But if he holds his ground, he get hit with a headbutt. You see Roldan, he circles the ring, and oh, good, good counter shot there by Jukumbayev. Man, Jukumbayev, he's got really dangerous counter punches. Jukumbayev coming off a four-week training camp in Colorado Springs. Said it reminded him of his homeland in the mountains, worked with some of the top amateurs from the Army team. And he has worked with Terrence Crawford and his team in the past. Yeah, they train in Colorado as well, Crawford. You know what it is about Roldan, he, he's offbeat. That up, offbeat rhythm up. is very difficult to time. Punches from weird angles, comes in from everywhere. You see, Jokumbai up there tries to hold his ground and fire back. But again, you're risking a headbutt every time you do hold your ground. But you notice the hand position of Jokumbai yep. He's keeping his gloves very much in front of his head for that reason, champ, for the headbutt. Right, right, right. Explosive start to our main event. Mike Goldberg, my powerful partners, the former two-time world champion, the magic man, Paulie Malinaji, former world champion, Chris Algieri. This main event for the WBA Continental North America Super Lightweight Belt. Got ourselves another great fight. Oh, yeah. And they started fast tonight, too. Yes. Boom. Yeah, he's down and he gets hit with that shot. Man, that was a hard knuckle punch, too. That was a good right hand that rolled Dan Lantern once again that had <laughs> that had Jukumbayev shook up. Pushes him back here. Yeah. It just keeps going. Good. Better round. Better round. Better round. Don't gotta let him look hop past in. the we numbers. Gotta, we gotta, gotta look past the numbers. He's got seven in, KOs, but he's a tricky puncher. Right. Somebody gotta tell him he's got seven KOs. He doesn't right. he doesn't he doesn't know it. <laughs> Certainly not acting like it. Raul Camacho in the corner of Rodon. Charles Leverett in the corner of Jukumbaya. Scheduled for 10. The Southpaw from Kazakhstan in the red and black trunks. Argentina's Rodon El Nato in the light blue and white trunks representing his home nation. Big left hand thrown by Jukumbaya. You see how he comes forward punching? If you hold your ground, you're going to run his getting butted. He did, I don't even think he knows what stance he's in when he's throwing. Lefty, righty, steps through with his as he's punching. You see, then he goes all over the ring, so then it's hard to track him down to get the get back. Because you want to get the get back after he's done doing that, but he's all over the ring. Roldan won the WBA Feta Latin welterweight title in February of this year in his home country of Argentina. Good counter left hand there by Button Jukumbayev. And Roldan is hurt. Jukumbayev. No, 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 no. 
continuing break, to swing break, away. Break, get back. Come here, this is a good old fashioned scrap. Oh, right hand. And left hand by Jukumbaya, yeah. too. They both hands. Hands a good right hand, and Jukumbaya comes right back with his own left hand. Tip for tat, these two. So, why should you watch every other Wednesday night on Pro Box TV? This is why. Get him up. And the first two fights are, are pretty good uh, assets that we bring you every other Wednesday as well. Brodane's lefty right now. <laughs> he's, he's, oh! Wait, a one-two from the southpaw stance. Change his stance and throws another one-two. He's a wild man. Team got a little streak of blue for Argentina. That's that footwork, man. <laughs> That's, uh, I wouldn't say it's slick or pretty, but the job done tonight so far. It's not messy footwork, but it's... No, certainly not. Messy as an eye, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but it certainly is effective. Great international flavor to our card here tonight. You know, Jukumbaya could make his life a lot easier. I'm not complaining because, oh, we've got to shoot out and it's a lot of fun. But I think if he just settled down behind his jab and just let his hands go in a very fundamental fashion, he'd probably have a lot easier. I think he's, he's having a hard time doing that because of the weird movement of of, of Roldan. Oh, he's, trying, he's trying to time the counters. And yeah. Just, right, so now you're not going to be able to do that. No. I think he should just let his hands go. Just start, start getting on the jab. Get your feints going. Because he's waiting. He's waiting for the counter. Yeah, he can't find the range. Look, ah. Roldan just doesn't give him that range. He's all over the place. Roldan does a nice job of doing a lot of awkward lateral movement and then firing in literally yeah. with, with, you know, one, two, stepping through. He takes over like a kamikaze. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, kamikaze is a good way to put it. Okay, we see that was that nice overhand left counter from Jukubayev that had the late reaction shot, <laughs> had the legs of Roldan in all types of trouble. And then... There we saw a good 2-1 combination from Roldan. Such a tricky puncher, you know where the shots are coming from. Better round for Jukumbayev, obviously, because he got, he had Roldan a little bit hurt. But still, Roldan was still successful at times. Yeah. This is not gonna be an easy one to score, man. This is, no. a, this is a weird fight. No. Come on, don't Extremely follow, awkward. don't follow, don't follow, okay? Let's go, use your jab, let's go. Polly, when you get caught like Jukumbayev did in round one, you guys have been in that situation. Back How long does it take mentally to, to settle back into what was your original game plan? I mean, it, it, with a guy like this who's all over the place, it's, I mean, I don't think it's that easy, you know? I mean, I don't know. I, I can remember getting dropped early by Zab Judah in the second round and then just got right back on the game plan and it worked out. Oh, oh. big overhand but left. I, but I think, I think every situation is different, and, and, and Roldan is oh. a weird fighter. And Roldan comes right back with a good left hand, right hand combination. Like you said at the top of the show, Chris, Roldan doesn't care about any game plans coming out of the red corner. His only plan is to leave with this belt. You see, it's hard to find the range on him because look how, how much he moves. And then when he stops, he's, he's doing all kinds of weird stuff flying in. He doesn't stop to rest so you can be basic with him. You see right here? Jim, you see what I mean? He'll stop here. Yeah, but he's and dangerous because when he stops, he's ready to fire. But that's what I'm saying. So it's hard for Jukumbayev to just beat him with the basics because he can't find the range on him. Very good. Oh! Keep it clean, guys. See, see he's got behind the jab, landed the left hand, then step back and counter. Solid and consistent for seven months with Charles Leverett at Triple Threat Boxing in Colorado Springs. Jukumbayev. His trainer said has upgraded his game. He's going to need all of his game and then some against this tough 22 one and one fighter from Argentina. Chikumbayev doing an excellent job this round, cutting off the ring, making it small, putting a lot of physical pressure on his man. It's only a matter of time before Dan jumps in. Yep. It's only <laughs> and that's what Chikumbayev is waiting for. Like that. Good slip and rip by Chikumbayev. He's sitting on that left hand. Oh! He got hit with an elbow there, right? 
Oh, is that an elbow? <laughs> or a short left hook, but Jukabaya took it well. Well, you talked about clash of heads and now an elbow. It could be left weight. Oh, we are to nine yeah. limbs. That was a hell of a shot. And yeah. Jukabaya took it really well. Right on the point of the chin, whether it was an elbow or, or a left hand. All kinds of different angles. Roldan able to throw from. And Roldan and Roldan's the kind of guy, even when you find him, he's hard to hit, hit him clean because he's, he's so awkward the way he gives you the defensive looks. Yeah, he's, he's certainly not a fundamental boxer, but he is effective. And the body shot there by Rukumbaya, that's probably who he should go to a little bit more. That's another thing from what I've seen from Roldan. Excellently, excellent conditioning. Yeah. He's able to keep this up for, yeah. for 10 rounds, no problem. Keep clean, keep clean. Shoes broken. Look at this. Uh oh. Both, both of them. The soles are starting to come off the shoes. Dad's putting on some miles. And a good left hand there on this replay by Jukumbayev. Then up against the ropes here as he goes. Jukumbayev. Yeah, that was that left hand that we weren't sure if it was yeah. a, a punch or an elbow. It was Might certainly have been a punch. Oh, no. It was a forearm, dude. <laughs> that, was a, that was a good left hand to the chin. That was a great shot, but Duke Obama took that fought, well. He followed it up with the, with yeah, the punch, punch, punch through. Oh, dude, they just taped both so I, I both souls were coming I don't know if that's off. even going to work, dude. That, that tape can make your, your feet slippery. Yeah, that's not a great idea. They probably would have been better off just taking the souls completely off that shoe. Yeah. 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 It's Ooh. funny. I was looking at that shoe when they came in. I've never seen it before. Well, that Didn't look particularly. That, that explains why. Good shoe, and that, that explains why. And for a guy who moves a lot and stops on a dime and switches yeah. directions, you need your footing underneath you. Now, if he's going to be slipping and sliding, he's going to have big problems. That would be a real shame if that if that's uh, becomes a factor in this fight. There is. His, feet are, his, his feet already weren't that great to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> Round five, our main event scheduled for 10. He stops on a dime and fires. Yeah. I mean, he has. Oh, 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 my goodness. Both guys landed big left hands. Yeah, yeah athleticism, you, quickness, that, that, explosiveness. If you're just going by it, you're probably looking at your manager like, dude, where'd you find this guy? <laughs> where'd you find this opponent? Pro Box TV. Good fighters, great fights. Yeah, regardless no, 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 no. of how this fight ends up, nobody's going to want to fight this guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jukumbayev is, is a guy who's lost only to a world, current world yes. champion, right? <laughs> and Roldan believes that he got the better of Adorno on that night in which it was a 10-round unanimous decision going to Joseph Adorno. You know, Adorno's a good fighter in his own yes. right, so yeah. you know, that's, a, that's a good fight. Adorno has not had an easy schedule. You think about no, it, right? You had to put Jermaine Ortiz. Elvis Rodriguez. <laughs> Rodriguez fought this guy. He Even the guys he never heard of, like this guy. Ed, Edwin De Los Santos. Yeah. He has been in with the murderer's row. And Rodan told us in the fighter meetings he wasn't in the right mind for that fight. So even though they felt they should have come away with their arm raised, he also was able to look in the mirror and say, I got to improve. I'll tell you what, the way the Dorno punches, though, you won't be in the right mind if he hits your hand. Yes. Shots. Well, he's got, a, he's got someone in front of him in Jukubayev who's not a light puncher either. <laughs> look at Jukubayev. He went for the takedown goal. That's there. what I was thinking. <laughs> I'm like, he went that's for the judo throws. Huh? Wrap around with two Ronda, Ronda Rousey would be proud. The judoka. 50 seconds, round five. Still plenty of time for that head clash. He's dead closer and closer. Get back. I think it's been a bit of uh, Maia's ability to pull and counter, and also that he's been able to keep those, those that guard very high that we haven't seen a good cl clash of heads just yet. Right. Got a little Step abrasion back. under back. the eye of oh, Roldan oh, 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 now oh, oh. on his right side. Yeah, maybe from the left hands. Let go of the arm. Let go of the arm. Come on. 
Roldan loves to train. He's always on weight. You have seen the good movement, the speed, and the high volume, which he is well known for. Hmm. It's getting nippy in there on the inside. Little heads rubbing against each other. I'm sensing a little frustration from Jukabaya. Yeah, I mean, can you blame him? No, certainly not. But I replay. Nice left hand there by Jukumbaya. He's got the cleaner work. I mean, uh, that's a uh, roll in. Roll in. Yeah. Yep. He's got the cleaner work there at times with the with the straight shots, and that's what throws off too, because he'll go from light crazy work to to clean, straight, crisp work there. That was a tricky shot. Really short. Yeah. Nice right hand to the. And what do you not expect? Because he comes in wild, then he throws in you a nice straight one. Yep. Just a little bit, okay? Don't be afraid to get tired, but believe me, don't be sick. Vamos para el séptimo. Charles Leverett said of Jukumbayev, all-around boxer, can adjust on the fly, understands distance. In the gym, they stress balance, distance, and defense. Round number six of our main event of the evening, scheduled for ten. But is on Jukumbayev, Hugo Alberto Roldan. Couple of big shots. Well, Dan's got some beer on him too. Yeah, a lot, a lot of hard times do. Yeah. Get him up. Get him up. Only loss. He did go the distance, as I mentioned. Well, Dan shook up Jukumaya right. once again. With right. And well, Dan again will walk through the counter and then just throw land his own shot. Oh, oh Pasha hits work. there. Yeah, well, Jukumaya got the worst, the worst end of that. What happened to happen there? No complete, though. Winner takes home the WBA Continental North America no, Super no, no. Lightweight Championship belt. Paul, you got me. You got me laughing thinking about Jukum Baev looking at his manager like, "Where did yeah, you I mean, find this guy?" I mean, dude, this is. <laughs> I mean, I would be. If you win or lose, this is the point where you can't look good. It's impossible to look good regardless yeah. whether you win or lose it. Take a little uh, abrasion under the other eye now of Roldan. He's got little, little blotches of blood underneath both eyes. Good avoidance there by Jukumbayev. The frenetic pace from Roldan. I think you've got to start looking to counter from underneath if you juke him by him instead of over the top. Juke him by keeps stepping back. We're going to counter with the straight left hand. I think you got to start to at least consider that step back the way you're doing it, but then come with the uppercut instead because Roll Dan will fly in with his head, leading with his head, and you can probably meet him with something like that. Yeah, that but right. you run that step risk back, of having back, your hands lower when you're coming up and under, catching those head I remember I, was, I, I fought a guy that I, I nicknamed the Billy Goat, and <laughs> my coach is wanting me to throw uppercuts, and I'm like, every time I, I bring my hands anywhere, Near, not near my face, I get hit by it. So the thing, the thing is, you, if on that step back, your weight is on your back foot, so you should be able to protect yourself with your lead shoulder in case. But Good right hand by Roldan still requires a certain kind of timing. Big swing and a miss. Roldan's feeling confident right now. Six of his seven career knockouts came in his first ten fights. The way Roldan throws in the aggressiveness in which he fights with, surprised he's not up around 16 like his opponent. Yeah, he definitely punches way more respectable than, than the seven KOs that he has. Once again, Paulie, Chris makes it sound so much more elegant. <laughs> Thank you, partner. Our main 
event continues. Judges have their hands full in this one. Red and black trunks for Batazan Jukabayev. Light blue and white Argentinian colors for Hugo Alberto Roldan. White quarter palm on Najee Chris Algieri. Sounds like a shift here from Roldan. He's a... Uh, My he's powerful partners. Coming forward, throwing some big bombs. Yeah, that was a nice left hand a second ago. Round number seven. And I feel like you also have to catch Roldan when he's on the move. You can't... Oh, nice shots there. You, you can't catch Roldan. You can't try to fight Roldan when he stops moving. Because when a guy's in flight, a lot of times he can't really throw punches. You notice Jukumbaya, what he does, he tries to cut off the ring and, and, and get to Roldan. But then he's only looking to engage when Roldan stops. Once Roldan stops, he's looking to fly in right away. See, right here. Mm -hmm. now, now it's a lot harder to fight Roldan here. It's really hard to hit him with more than one shot, too. But on the move, you can attack him. You can throw punches. At worst, you'll miss, but he's not able to counter if he's flying all over the place like that. Roll Dan has gone the 10 round distance 13 times in his professional career. You see how Jukumbayev will not engage him here? He's waiting for him to stop the check. A good call by the ref, because that was a little bit of momentum shot, even though punch landed. Jukumbayev with the 16 of his 20 wins, coming by knockout. Good count in there for Jukumbayev. As it's clipped with the left. He's gone the full 10 twice. If the shot Jukumbayev's been looking for all night, that, that pull and left hand over the top as Roldan reaches. Crowd loving it here tonight. Yeah, right here is where you got to engage Roldan. Instead, he allows him to bounce all over the ring. And then watch, Jukum Bible and look to engage and wait for him to stop. Once Roldan stops, he's looking to fire first, as he does there. You've got to catch Roldan while he's bouncing, because he's harder to fight to, while you're bouncing all over the place. And the tape job on the shoes that were coming apart it worked out pretty well. It worked out OK, didn't it? Better than I thought it would. Yeah, the fact that it hasn't been an issue and we haven't even noticed it. Being a hockey player, I noticed it, of course. Got his skates taped. Kind of makes it, the shoes look better. <laughs> yeah. Look like nice, some, nice, I like Yeezys nice. now. It's got Las Vegas on the back of his shoes. Oh, kind of left hand again. Oh, slip. Yeah, Spent well, some time training there. Well, Dan's got some chin, man. That, that, that was a left hand right on the money. Yeah, right inside the right hook of, uh, of Roldan. You, you really can't ask to hit a guy cleaner than that. Yeah, especially as he's throwing. That was a good call by the ref. That was more of a forearm check. And a lot of refs would have called that out. Yeah, yeah. More, more, more than not, even though it's, it. it's not a knockdown. It's a good call, good move by the ref there. Not called a knockdown. Right here, make him have to do something. All right? Come off the camera. Good, good. Good job. Come on, let's go. Own it, own it. Jukumbayev and Leverett have been together consistently for seven months now. They have trained on and off in the past. Round number eight. And the pace has not slowed at all. Well, Dan, as you pointed out, Chris coming in in excellent condition. Jukumbayev training at altitude in Colorado Springs. We got blood. Paul, you've been talking about that headbutt all night long. Yep, it was bound to happen. Neither man is slowed. Now, both these guys are in excellent condition. Still three rounds to go. These guys are moving, moving sharp. Both look strong. Now we got a cut above the eye of Dukumbayev. Not a great 
spot. Hands, guys. Last eight fights for Roldan have gone the full ten. Again, though, Jukum Bayev not engaging when he's he, when he's moving here. Like this is when you should engage him. Had the knockdown in round number one. That did Roldan? It's gonna be an interesting fight to score. Not not jealous of the judges tonight. No, not at all. But again, you see, Jukum Bayev does not engage Roldan on the, when he's on the move. And once Roldan stops. He's not that easy to hit himself, and he's also more dangerous because he might fly in. We don't have 99, 91, 190, 190 in this one. No, no. Although we could have one one way and then one the other way. Yes. I wouldn't be surprised there either. Depends on what you like. The thing about Roldan is you can never get any momentum with him. Yeah, and, if you're, and if you wait till he stops, he set himself and. He's, he's not easy to hit. Break, 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 break. It's turned into a, a rough and rugged battle. But Roldan likes no, fights no, no. like that. Yes. He looks very huntable. He likes to scrap. Scrap we got. And Roldan taking advantage of the... Of, of, of the fact that he can move around freely. When he moves around, Jukum Bayev does not really know how to close the gap and engage him. He needs him to stop. See there, and finally he did a little bit. And this is a round where Jukum Bayev is giving up the round by just not being active. He's not letting his hands go. Not a whole lot got done, but... Jukum Bayev is one of those guys who wants to be set to throw a punch. And well, Dan moving around is what I'm saying, I guess. There's no sofa on the back of Roldan in this main event. Uh -uh. Yeah, yeah. Who's the man tonight in this main event of the evening? At times it's Roldan, at times it's Chukambayev. Got things started with an impressive finish for Ismael Villarreal out of the Bronx. Kareem Hackett dominated against Clay Waterman. And our main event, a very close fight. Watch the holding, guys. Round number nine for the third time in Jukumbayev's career. Good combination early. Straight left lands. Come on, let go, let go. Break. Come on, let go. Let go, guys. Work. Trabajo. Break. Chris, you talk about that on, beard guys. to roll down. I think it's made of iron. Yeah. He's, he's taking some really clean, hard shots with pretty much no residual effect. Yep. He's put on some miles tonight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's he literally ripped through the, the soles of his shoes. Yep. But <laughs> he needed a, needed a, a, pit, a pit change <laughs> in the middle rounds. You see how he just flew? He didn't even throw a punch there. He just flew with his head first. You see what I'm saying? And Jukum Bayev didn't throw either. He didn't counter. He just... At this point, it's, you know, countering is a dissipation. How can you anticipate a guy like, like well, that? You can't. You can't. You can't time him. There's no rhythm to him. It's just... It's a frenetic movement. There, there, there's no rhyme or reason. I don't even... He knows who he's going to Let's go. Let's go. Someone who's so unpredictable. Break, yeah. break, break. I mean, break. It was clear there there was a lot of holding done being done by Will Dan, and the ref's got to make, got to say something there. You can see Roger Kumbaya struggling to get his hands free. He's kind of let him go in some of those clinch situations tonight, Paulie. He has, but if no, somebody's no, no, holding no, no, that no strongly to where it's, it's you got to actually physically make a grimace to pull your hand out, that's a, that's a, that's a legit holding. It's not even subtle. 
Yeah, I've noticed a shift these last couple of rounds. Well, Dan, it doesn't look like he's looking to break, 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 really take control break, 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 of the fight anymore. Let go, let go, let go. He's, he's more using tactics to, to stem the attack, slow things down. Could it be anything that Jogan Bayer landed the champ? Could be. I mean, he's landed some really good counters up top. Um, but you're big, seeing big less left last round, right, Chris? I mean, every round he's landed one good shot. Right on cue. Break, 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 break. I guess the going to win anyway. It's <laughs> one way or the other. Yeah, like this movement here, this, this isn't for anything anymore. Like he's, yeah. he's not looking to engage. Oh. 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 I'll tell you, we might wind up in an MMA fight in a, in a second. Uh, I know. Little guillotine. You can buy it from Kazakhstan. I wouldn't be surprised if he could if he doesn't know how to wrestle. Vamos, no confíe, tenemos que traer este round. Es el último acto. Vamos, vamos. You gotta win this round, says Raúl Camacho. Remain. What is on Jukabayev? Red and black. Light blue and white for Hugo Alberto Roldan. Raul Camacho telling his fighter you need to win this 10th and final round. I tell you, if Roldan doesn't win tonight, I don't think anybody's ever going to fight him. <laughs> <laughs> At least if he wins, he's, he, got cocky, he can enforce through the rankings and can fight. But I don't know if anybody's ever going to want to fight him after yeah. tonight's performance. Dangerous, dangerous guy. Not fun to fight. Not going to look good against him either way. The risk and reward factor. Roldan is high risk for anyone. Including Barazan Jukumbayev tonight. Roll Dan's last finish was September 13th of 2019. That was before COVID. That was before COVID. That was a whole different world. <laughs> literally. Literally. <laughs> I don't think we're going to see one tonight. He's thrown all but three punches in this round so far. Yeah. So. Had the knockdown scored in round number one. Oh, I forgot about that. It's been so long ago. Like so much has happened in the fight since then. I forgot too, Jim. That's why we're a team. That's why we're family. I got you guys. Very interesting. But Jokin himself won't throw a punch, like, unless... Unless Rodan holds still, and, and Jukum Bayev costs himself sometimes the possibility of the round because he's not throwing. Yeah. He's allowing Rodan to move it without having to pay for it. Let go down. Let go down. Break. 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 I might wager largely. Nope, that's a slip. Wager largely. That roll down won't stop moving the final 35 seconds of this fight. He likes to jump in with that right hand. 15 seconds from being in the hands of the judges. Well, Dan's saying bring it, but you got any 
defensive back. They go the distance. Well, they may have given this one away in the last couple of rounds, guys. I don't know what you guys think, but he almost took his foot off the effort yeah. in the last couple of rounds. And what, it, to me, has been a close fight all night. He's got the knockdown around one. That could help him out. Yeah, but you gotta it could get interesting. You know, he, he, was, he was disengaging those last three yeah. rounds. And even though Jukumbaev wasn't doing a whole lot in that round, Roldan was doing even less. Yeah. Go back to the first. And that big combination Surprise that caught Jukumbaev. Which could play into the, the, the I mean, it's definitely going to play into the, the score, but it could that was a be shot meaningful. That, that was a shot he got hit with on the way down, where he was actually down. We see Roldan shaking Jukubayev once again. I mean, early on, this was a firefight. These guys are really, you know, the, the, ex the explosive rushes of Roldan and the counterpunching of Jukubayev. Um, as the fight wore on, Jukubayev was able to land some good counters from the outside. Few and far between, but it seemed like it kind of stemmed the, the flow of Roldan, who started to use his movement more as a way to disengage the offensive and counterpunching of Jukubayev rather than uh, to use as a way to hide his, his offense. And like you said, Champ, it seems like he gave away a lot of those last couple rounds by just not engaging enough. Yeah. That big left hand landing late in the fight. And now the judges will render their decision. With this WBA Continental North America super lightweight belt on the line, the official decision is in. Is it Jukumbayev or is it Roldan? Here is Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rough and rugged rounds, we go to the scorecards. Shami Shipman scores at 96-93. Noventa y seis on Noventa y tres. Jukembaev. Dennis Devon scores at 97-92. Noventa y siete on Noventa y dos. Rodan. Joe Ware scores about 95-94. Noventa y cinco on Noventa y cuatro. El ganador por decisión dividida. The winner by split decision. And now the WBA Continental Americas, Nor Continental North Americas champion, Batter Dukan Baye! Split decision victory for Batazan Dukanbaev. And those last couple of rounds might have done it. Man. Yep. And that last scorecard was only a couple points, right? Or two, three points? One point. Well, it was both ways. 96-93, Jukumbayev. 97-92, World Dan. And then 95-94, Jukumbayev. Wow, that was the one. Super, super, he super gave, close. He gave away the last couple of rounds for sure. He yeah. threw like five punches total in the last two rounds. He could have won that fight tonight. Yeah. That's wild. The fight. Jukumbayev, the winner of the WBA Continental North America Super Lightweight Championship here in our main event on Pro Box TV. <laughs> Representing his home nation of Kazakhstan very proudly here tonight. Two Wednesday night fights. Hey guys, make sure you tune in Wednesday night fights here on Pro Box TV. We got great action fights, 50-50 matchups and all out wars throughout. We have consistently put on the best fights around. Good fighters, great fights on your boxing channel with a star-studded cast bringing you the fight. Myself, Chris Algieri, the former world champion, and of course, Mike Goldberg. So make sure you tune in Wednesday night fights for all the action. As Goldie likes to say, here we go. On the next Wednesday night fight, October 4th, don't miss Pablo Cesar Cano, the demolition man, as he takes on Zachary Ochoa. Get your tickets at ProBoxTV.com or take your chances at the door. Wednesday Night Fights.
And what a night we had tonight. What a night we expect. Two weeks from now, October 4th, right here, again from our world headquarters in Tampa, Florida. The two-time world title contender who was defeated by the one, the only pulling on the Najee back in October that's gonna be, of 2012. That's going to be, yeah, over a over a decade, 11 years to the month, 11 years to the month, because <laughs> he's fighting October 2023 here. Yep, and, and then another Puerto Rican that you know very well from Brooklyn. Paulie knows pretty much everybody. I'm sure you know him too. Chris. Oh, yeah, I know Zach. Yep, yeah. New York, we're New York because we know each other. Yes, yes you do. Yeah. Yes, you do. And how about Daryl Blast Val Saint? looking to continue the role here in 2023. He has been spectacular. He's looked better and better as of late. I, I'm always uh, I'm always very excited when he fights. I want to see the, him excel his game because he's getting better all the time. He switches sides. We, we, we mentioned earlier in the show about how guys who switch and can't switch and yeah. how most people can't. Valsain can't. And Oscar Alvarez now has turned 20, Paulie. Coming off his first career loss, it'll be interesting to see how he responds. Yeah, yeah, he's going to have to summon that uh, alleged 600 amateur fight <laughs> career that, that he had. And, and, and knew get that, that was coming. Get that, get, summon some of that experience. He's coming off of a, coming off of a loss. Uh, he's still young enough to, you know, re rejuvenate his career. We'll see how he comes back looking. Regardless, he's always fun. Yeah, it, always fun. And the word of the night has been allegedly, but I can promise you allegedly. we will be back in two weeks. Not allegedly. Not we allegedly, will be no. back in two weeks. Well, uh, 600 is allegedly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> very much allegedly and i'm gonna lean towards you know which way i'm leaning <laughs> magic man all right what a night we had my powerful partners we enjoyed ismael via real and a quick finish of john david martinez then our co-main event for the wba intercontinental light heavyweight title kareem hackett defeats clay waterman in a battle of unbeatens, a dominant performance for Toronto, Ontario, Canada's Hackett in our main event. You just saw it. As good as they get. And the winner is Batazan Jukumbayev for my powerful partners, the Magic Man, Paulie Molinaji, Chris Algieri, Mike Goldberg, saying so long until next time. We see you right back here on Pro Box TV.